Palm Beach. They're into the second semi-final. This is the grand final that people were talking about at the start of the year. Without disrespecting Mount Eliza and, and Frank's not playing tomorrow, but these are the, this will be the favoured way of the two sides left. But who's going to be the side that advances to the 2022 Division 1 grand final in two weeks' time? At the home of football, Car Street, Skybus. Yeah, absolutely. You're right, Foster. We can see that uh, David Armage is going to start on the wing. He's opposed to Jimmy Cale. So in the middle for Bomb Beach, Shane McDonald, Mitch Gent. We've got Sam Gilded in the ruck, along with Jackson Casey's For the YCW midfielders, Bailey Smith, obviously, in the ruck. We've got uh, Brenton Lambert's in there, Blake Mullane, and I reckon Luca Goonan's the other one as well. So the first siren... We're underway here at Olympic Park. Rosebud, Gilbert. Ball's on the ground. Handball out from Casey. Quick kick by Mitch Gent going forward. But it's intercepted by Max Gregory. He's got the footy on the back flank. He goes down looking for a target. Coming through the pack was Schmidt. Gilbert on his right. He goes up. He was looking for Joe Fisher. Bo Bailey. He was fantastic last week. Mitch Gent. He fends off one, but he can't get past him. Great tackle from here up. And YCW will be awarded a free kick here. Just hesitated, didn't he? Shouldn't have given it back. Should have given it back to Bo Bailey. Like you said, outstanding last week. 24 touches. Although that's not a great kick, David Armitage. He chops it off for Bomb Beach. He's going to go inside the corridor. He goes over the top. He's found Shane McDonald. So he's been prominent. He goes up looking for Bo Bailey. As we mentioned, fantastic last week. He started very well once again. That's going to be cut off by YCW through the player in Gregory. Great tackle by Trent Dennis Lane. Oh, and the umpire is going to reward it. So Bomb Beach through Trent Dennis Lane. We'll have the first opportunity to get the first score on the board here. We've played one minute and 13 seconds. Well, Max and Gregory, well, sorry, guys. Trent Dennis Lane will line up a very notable goal kicker, boys. So although he's going to kick from about 45 out, You'd back him in. 100%. Even with this slight breeze that's going their way, I wouldn't suspect it's any more than, than two goals. I was going to give Max Gregory a huge shout-out then for two-on-one, bringing that ball to ground when they were easily out, but wasn't helped uh, with that tackle there. But he started very nicely for YCW. So Trent Dennis Lane for the first goal of the second semi-final. Comes in. It's a low kick. It doesn't make the distance. You've got maybe a little bit too close to the man on the mark there. And the ball is in the back pockets now being cleared out towards defensive 50. In fact, has gone, I think it's gone out of bounds in the forward has. So Bomb Beach will load up once again. And from 55 metres out, I think that might have been Bo Bailey out there. It goes in towards the forward pocket. Ball knocked away. And take the mark, actually. The ball's kicked around the corner, but it's been marked up there for YCW in defence. And going for kicker towards Josh Patolo. The ball goes over the line for a boundary throw-in. So both sides still yet to score. we played two and a half minutes. This game, of course, brought to you by, thanks to Battery World of Mornington, live on RPPFM and uh, Chisholm Sports Academy, the streaming this afternoon. And we'll keep you updated with some of all playing Keringle just down the road at the preliminary final. Winner to play Lang Warren next week. Absolutely, as Frank's the Mice W through Blake Mullane, extracted from the contest. He's gone in the middle of the ground. There's not too much uh, playing people out there. Vossi, I'll tell you what, Blake Mullane, he follows up. He's got it back once again. It, it was his initial kick, but he goes inboard and he's uh, turning it over, taking the mark. He's Stenning. I reckon YCW have had 12 kicks so far, boys. Not one of them have hit the target yet. So Stenning goes wide. Not a great kick. He was looking for Waterstone. And it's going to trickle out. We'll get our first... One of our first throw-ins does. I know yeah, you're on, keeping, the, on the count today, mate. I'm keeping an eye on it for you, mate. Given your hefty frustration last week with how many stoppages we were getting. So I'll update you throughout the day. Ball thrown in. Rucks do battle. Gilbert Pachulo in the ruck for the YCW. Stone catch. It's on the far side. Quick kick forward by Sam Gilbert. Cutting it off with Schmidt, but he wasn't able to pick it up. Bomb Beach, they go down on the far side. It's Trent Dennis Lane versus Brenton Credlin out there. Tackle applied. And we're going to get a, another stoppage. And around the grounds for Brend, uh, for Bendigo Bank, I should say. Kringle have kicked the first against Somerville. Only a couple of minutes gone in that one. 
So rock through Bailey Smith. He hits it over the top, but only standing there was Shane McDonald. He goes on his left inside forward 50. Dylan Robertson for the Stonecats was standing there. They've got it up. They've worked it to the halfback flank. Taking the mark was Luca Goonan. He can look inboard. Hero was standing there, but he's gone out wider along the, the boundary line, Vossi. Both sides still yet to score. Played five minutes in the opening quarter as the kick goes down the scoreboard side. Going back and could mark. Taken for Frankston YCW. They can get it and go. They go towards half forward. They are taking ball over the line for a boundary throw in. Well, so since AJ said that not a lot of them were happening, we've had four throw in. So good to see the commentator's curse is alive and well, not just with goal kicking. Good crowd in attendance here this afternoon, as you would expect. The southern end of the, the peninsula packed with people, local football fans. It's a good place to be. And of course, no AFL. Of course, you've got plenty of uh, opportunity to come out and see your local team play. So once again, ball will be thrown back into play. About 45 metres out from the Frankston YCW goal. will go into the Eastbourne Road, into the ground in the opening quarter. Ball was thrown back into play. Bomb Beach have got it out of their defensive 50 and now it's going to be locked up. Just defensive side of centre wing for Bomb Beach. And it's still yet to score and we've played six minutes in the opening quarter. Ball thrown up, Bailey Smith dominating the ruck work with his big frame. Umpire circles and we're going to get it. another stoppage. Both sides yet to score. Six minutes in, Premier Traditional Home Scoreboard. Bachelor World of Mornington match of the day. Shane McDonald, he had his ball smothered. And we're going to get another throw in. Streaming thanks to Chisholm Sports. Also to Pro Finish Roofing along with uh, WorkSafe. Something's got to break this. We need a circuit breaker. Something's got to break this open. A big clearance, big kick inside 50, and then both teams will be able to settle in. Absolutely. The pressure's been up from the start, Daz. Courtesy of Bendigo Bank. Australia all out 141 in the cricket, and Zimbabwe are 5 for 80. Oh, oh boy. So we've got a blood rule here. Nice and early. David Warner made 96 of those runs. Yeah, I watched a bit of it. He was batting on a different wicket. Yeah, he definitely was. So seven minutes into this game, boys, we've had 12 stoppages already. Inside 50s, three to three all, I should say. Sorry. So both teams have gotten in there a little bit, but unable to score. But Bond Beach all over the clearances, four to one. Looking at the scorecard, Glenn Maxwell, I think, made 19, and the and the rest have made 26 with extras between them. So the rest have done three fifths of five eights, boys. <laughs> Jeez, I thought you were going to drop something. Out, <laughs> Sorry, did I? I was worried. Then. Coming over the top. Was the Stone Cats player there? Hura has the footy. He goes in looking for a target, taking a the kick. mark. Really good kick. Was Butlin, and he'll go back and steady Frankston YCW and hopefully get them on the board. We've been playing at nearly eight minutes. Both sides yet to score, but this is certainly a kickable. Yeah, if shot we, at goal, boys. If we've learnt anything, especially at this ground, is never say that it's a kickable distance. We saw Reese Wild here last week. Apologies to the young fella for me bringing it up. It was at the top of the goal square and kicked it into the man on the mark, so anything could happen. In comes Butlin. Enters inside 50. Coming back. Goal umpire likes it. So Frankston, YCW, get the first on the board. They're one straight six. Bomb Beach yet to score. Premier Traditional Home Scoreboard. It's a pretty easy game, Bossy, when you can enter inside 50 and kick it to your forward's advantage. I mean, there's a reason why some of the basics of footy haven't changed in 150 years. Well, it's a pretty simple game. <laughs> it's, isn't it? <laughs> the complications really do uh, get eliminated when you uh, when you really are help, ready to help your teammates out. So, good start here for YCW. Bomb Beach, they're getting their hands on the footy. They're just not holding a lot of shape forward to center yet, but... Plenty of time to go to do that, boys, of course. And for Bendigo Bank, uh, Kringle are up two goals to nothing on Somerville early days. So nine minutes in the opening quarter. YCW with the first score, one straight six. Bomb Beach yet to score back to the middle. The umpire's given a free kick out of the ruck contest. Boys, I don't think Sam Gilbert's the right matchup for Smith today. 
yeah, it's been a struggle early, but we saw Bond Beach give away the first eight clearances. Uh, no, apologies, wrong game that I'm thinking of there. Bond Beach won the clearances easily last week and started really well here, 6-1. That's good, that's good kick. It was, it was dropped though, but an opportunity for McDonald inside attacking 50. Gets a hand pass back by Bailey with a kick around the corner. Goes towards the pocket and goes over. So about 40 metres out from the Bond Beach goal. Bond Beach still yet to score. Frankston YCW, one straight six and Bond Beach, of course. Uh, I'm sure their supporters know it. They don't like to bring it up. They're not saying it anyhow. They're looking for their first senior premiership for near on 40 years. Big drought to break. So That's ball was thrown in. Armitage goes over to Mitch Gent. Sorry, it was the play there in Verma. He had his head ripped off. Make it seven clearances to one. So... At the moment, he fancies himself. He thought Sam Gilbert probably should have went past him for the handball. Mm, yeah, spot on. Raking long left foot, but now Verma's going to have to go back and line up. The one thing you can't do in this situation is land the ball two metres out and let it get spoiled for a behind. That's a waste of a set shot. So in comes Verma. That's not going to make the distance. Top of the square, Fisher goes up. Ball comes to ground. Standing there was McDonald. He lays a tackle. Robertson for the Stone Cats. He exits their defensive 50. Right. He goes up finding Bailey Angwin. So he has the mark on the defensive 50. He goes in short. Robertson over the top. Through to Diaz. Back to play there in Angwin. Over to Mullane. He wanted to go in the middle of the ground with a bit of a scrubber, but it may work here for the Stone Cats through Tempest. He puts on the afterburners. Inside 50 he goes. Shot at goal. What's the umpire going to say? It is a goal. So YCW get their second on the board. Two straight 12. Bomb Beach yet to score. Really clever from Dylan Robertson Was involved in three of those disposals. And that's the second kick that Blake Mullane has had into the middle of the ground. Both of them to open space. And off the boot, Vossi looked no good at all. But that was a fantastic bit of pace. And a, a fantastic finish. You've got to slow yourself down, compose yourself when you're entering forward 50. Did it magnificently. And Bond Beach not taking their chances. YCW have had two half chances and taken them both. Good start. So Bond Beach up. Uh, sorry, YCW up by 12 points. Bond Beach just needing to set themselves into this game. Eight clearances to one. Takes it away. Goes inside attacking 50. Going back and take the mark. There for the... Frankston YCW side. I think that might have been Byron Barry. He took the mark. He went out to half back, but the ball wasn't marked. And the umpire said it's actually going to be a ball up. Just in that little unsighted position there. So the umpire throws it up. Quick kick. Centering kick. It's marked at centre half back here for Frankston YCW, and they can look to clear, and they will through the agency of Jimmy Kale. It was. Another short pass, Mark taken by Barry, Byron it, Byron it is, just looking to find a sense of option down the line, Doe's down the line with a kick, the ball comes to the back, an opportunity for the Stone Cats to get off the races but the ball actually bounced away, it enables Palm Beach to get back into the contest there, and now they take it out. They look like they were going to get away there, YCW, but just didn't bounce kindly. 13 minutes in the opening quarter. The Stone Cats are two straight 12. Bomb Beach are yet to score, and we played 13 minutes, the Premier Traditional Home scoreboard. Yeah, it was a, a lucky bounce for Bond Beach, but the way they were able to set up defensively while YCW were attempting to um, spread across the ground, really impressive. Shane McDonald, he goes by hand over to Armitage. He goes into the corridor. Taking the mark for Bomb Beach. Jackson Casey. He goes in, finding Bo Bailey. He's going to go long. Inside forward 50, just pokes a little ball looking for Hewlett. No one can take the mark. Schmidt by hand over the top. Pachulo. Long, high ball. Inside forward 50. Who's going to stand under it? No mark taken. Ball comes to ground. Wallace shot at goal. YCW get their third on the board. They just look too slick, too clean at the moment, boys. 
Yeah, absolutely. And they had an extra at that contest, which is really befuddling to us, considering it took a little bit just to get the ball down there. But once they had it, YCW, that didn't look like stopping. And, yeah, Lockie Wallace, that's a fantastic finish on the run. And Bond Beach, we lauded their defence last week, didn't we, boys? The fact that they were able to set up magnificently. But YCW are getting it in quick, and they're under the pump. And... Uh we should, we should say a, uh, a good afternoon or evening, whatever the time is over in Vietnam at the moment. We say uh, good day to Buzzer over there who's listening. Absolutely. The, uh, a bit warmer over there, what it is here at the moment. Although it's not too bad a day. We are in spring now, so hopefully the days will be getting a little bit, a little bit warmer. Bomb Beach are going to get on the scoreboard. They go inside attacking 50. The mark has been taken. It's been taken by Joe Fisher. He plays on. And now Bo Bailey's got it 40 metres out directly in front. Better ball movement there, boys. Yeah, Much absolutely. quicker. Yeah, that was their 10th clearance as well. 10 to 3, which is astounding, considering they're only plus one in inside 50. So he's got the responsibility here, Bo. He's just got to put this through. Now, when they played in round 15, um, it was YCW 19 5 1 19, beating Palm Beach 8 9 57. And Palm Beach were all over the Stone Tats, the first game of the year, and the Stone Tats stormed home in the last quarter to win that game. Bo Bailey has missed. Palm Beach are on the board, one behind. YCW 3 straight 18, 15 and a half minutes, and this game is streamed to you thanks to Chisholm Sports Academy. We saw Geordie Andrews miss them from this end in the first quarter of last week's game, boys, and they can't afford to miss too many more. Bomb Beach, they've got to take their chances. So Petrullo with their hands over to Lambert. Beringer goes back to Dylan Robertson. He does a bit of a, a U-turn there. Gregory back to Robertson. He can run onto it. He's going to go by hand. Lambert. He's tackled, taken, and that is holding the ball. Pretty poor communication there. Needed to just get it forward. I went with the hands. Get on the boot. Turnover. Blake Mullane standing in the way. That's He's probably got the Schmidt quick... in the middle of the ground if he wants him. That's probably the quickest commentator's curse of all time, I reckon, with that kick there. So Mitch Gent, he affects a spoil. Bailey goes out wide up. Trent Dennis Lane on the lead. He's going to go inside forward 50, looking for Joe Fisher, and he takes the mark. Much better, as we said, ball movement from the Sharks. Yeah, with the ball, both teams are looking really solid, aren't they? YCW looking a bit better without the footy at the moment, but not a lot that defences can do about that. Pretty risky kick from Elaine coming into the middle there. Good spoil by Mitch Gent, and, of course, a fantastic kick by Trent Dennis Lane for their seventh inside 50 to only have one scoring shot. They've got to become more efficient than that because YCW have got three goals on the board uh, from five inside 50. So they need this to settle themselves down Bomb Beach because with the footy, they're looking OK. So this just a steady... Bomb Beach down. Bring the margin back to 11 points. So, Fisher it is, has the shot. He likes it. Bomb Beach are on the board. 1-1-7. Stone Cats 3 straight, 18, 17 and a half minutes in the opening quarter. And that was much needed, boys. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it really was much needed. And, of course, around the grounds, Kringle are off to a fast start. 3-1-19, playing Somerville one behind. So, Somerville uh, needing to wake up in that game, boys. And, of course, across town as well when we go to the AFLW. Dogs up by a kick on the power. The Cats are up by eight points on the Dockers. And in the VFL semi final, 25-point lead for Brisbane's reserves over Carlton last quarter. Ball thrown up. They're still persevering with Sam Gildy in the ruck. I think that's a move that they need to make, Bomb Beach. Just play him as a midfielder. Owen Hewlett or Liam Hewlett into the ruck. But it's inside the forward 50 for the Stonecats. Tackle applied by Butlin. And the umpire is going to call for it and we'll get a stoppage on the 50 metre mark for the Stonecats. Heading towards the Eastbourne Road end. This will be the 20th stoppage of the first quarter. So Bichulo goes with a fist. Mullane was standing there for the stone catch. He got another handball out. Tackle applied. Umpire circles and we'll get another ball up. So we've moved about 10 metres to the right of the screen. Gilbert. Ball's on the ground. Bomb Beach getting the free kick. Vantage taken by Bo Bailey. Owen Hewlett taking the mark. He goes in short looking for Shane McDonald. Ball hits the ground. Byron Barry. He turns it over. Armitage has the footy at the back flank for Bomb Beach Sharks. 
He goes across goals with a chiseling ball, finding the player in right. That's not a great kick. Going to turn it over. Bomb Beach butter up their work with a fantastic smother. Although YCW have the numbers on the far side, they just get a toe poke forward, standing in the way. Is William Dunn for Bomb Beach. They've worked the ball into the middle of the ground. Players converge on it. Handball out by YCW. Luca Goonan inside forward 50. Great kick. Yeah, really smart kick, wasn't it? They actually had an extra on the outside if they wanted to uh, just handball the ball into goal, but found a really nice option by lowering their eyes, and you take a set shot versus a kick on the run every single time. Inside 50s have now evened up, boys. So YCW getting back on top in the territory battle, and if this goes through, they'll go up 17 points. So Mount Trap back. He was the man that took the mark. He enters the 50-metre line there. In he goes. Umpire does a bit of work, but it's missing to the near side. YCW 3-1-19. Bomb Beach 1-1-7. Premier traditional home scoreboard. We've been going 20 minutes. Just hitting time on, Vossi. Just hit time on, OJ. Absolutely. And Bomb Beach should be not happy the way things are going, but they'll be happier if they can keep YCW off the goal tally and maybe score another one before quarter time because... Just let themselves down a little bit early with their disposal inside attacking 50. They just start to settle a little bit into this game. The ball is going to be balled up on centre wing. And I know there's plenty of time to go, boys, but for Bendigo Bank, Karingal 4 2 26, Somerville 1 behind. Not sure if there's a wind. There's not much here, but really good start by Karingal, hoping to avenge their qualifying final loss. Four minutes to go in the opening quarter, boys. So umpire once again calls for a ball up. Hey, Greg. <laughs> Bossy's just calling out to people. <laughs> he knows too. Is it possible to know too many I'm people? Mayor, mayor I'm not sure. Does. Could be. Better watch out, Daz. Absolutely. So, YCW looking to go forward. And go into the centre of the ground, in fact. And it's a hand pass off, and BJ Credlin's got it. They let him go a long way down there. I mean, he had no one really covering, and they're not the greatest of kicks by BJ. Ball comes back, and it'll take an on half back there for Bomb Beach by Sean Torrigan, it was. Now they can play on. They've got the player there, and Liam Hewlett on the half forward line. He goes to Shane McDonald. He runs to the pocket. He has the shot at goal. He could have run a bit closer. Is there a downfield free kick? I think there is. I think it's got to come back because it, it went through for a score, Vossi. Shane McDonald, pretty silly there. He could have run a bit closer, boys. Yeah, he definitely could have. You're not wrong. The old and legs he... aren't going as quick as they used to, Vossi. And if he's got a bit of a corky, it might affect the distance as well, so we'll see. So, if anyone can kick it, he can, though. The man with the very, very original nickname of Macca. I don't know where they get that from. Extremely Dad. original, isn't it, Vossi? Yeah. He's probably the first McDonald that's been called Macker, I think. Might yeah. take off around the world. He's a good man. He's a good man, Macker. He's uh, still starring for his football club and wouldn't he love to have a chance to be in a, another grand final in a couple of weeks' time. But they've got to get there first, win another game to get there. There's a kick off target and it's been knocked through for a behind. So Bomb Beach up to 128, YCW 3-1-19. Richmond, take note of that, Bossy. If you're a Richmond player, take note of how you knock it through the uh, behinds. And I think there have only, only been two YCW players as opposed to five in the, the square for Richmond the other night. Absolutely. Lilac brings the ball out. And a hearty goodbye to all of our Richmond listeners. <laughs> They've gone in short, finding Jeez, Matt this, LaFontaine. This is a train he goes in with a chiseler, but it's cut off by yeah, Stenning. It was a handy acquisition about halfway through the season just before clearances came, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, Vossi, I think they'll be pretty happy with that one. Tell you what, they won't be happy with Bomb Beach. The ease in which they were able to go coast to coast there. It wasn't as if the play on from the goal square came ultra quickly, but another inside 50 for YCW where just three disposals ago they were on their way out. So the ball thrown in. Pachulo. YCW Ruckman have both been on top in this game. Umpire calls for it, and we'll get another stoppage. 23 and a half minutes gone. Pachulo just pushes his opponent out. Goonan, he goes with a left foot snap. Top of the goal square. Who can take a mark? Troutbeck tried to rein it in, but he couldn't. Ball comes out. Armitage by hand. Stenning. 
In trouble is done. He's tackled and dumped. So the tempo certainly lifted in the last few minutes, boys. Tackles are plenty. Yep. Umpire's going to call for it once again. Spot on. 12-5 clearances in favour of Bomb Beach, yet the inside 50s are dead even, so they're not going very far once they do win the footy. And once again, we'll get another stoppage. What about the stoppages, Daz? Uh, I'll do some quick math. This will be the 28th stoppage of the first quarter, so we're on track for 112 throughout the day. Thank you. Quick snap at goal across the face. Trout back. Can't take the mark. It's hit the behind post on the full, so Nick Waterston will take the free kick for the Bomb Beach Sharks. Wet rock. Um, boys, I did touch on the round 15 game. The round one game, which is a round six game, but played the first week of the season. Bomb Beach by, 30, that out. by 33 points. They're up at three quarter time, 10 7 to 5 4. They're eventually beaten 11 9 to 14 5. Wow. So marks so, taken by Ben McLean. Both teams struggling to lock the ball in after uh, a point or an out on the full. You don't often see that in a final. He's gone over the top to Bo Bailey. Probably been the best for Bomb Beach so far. So who have they got down the line? Hewlett. Spoiled away by BJ Credlin and his defensive team. We'll get a throw in right in front of where we're broadcasting from. 3 one playing Bomb Beach 1-2-8. 25 minutes and a half minutes gone, Bossy. Yeah, not too long to go in this opening quarter. Boundary umpire to throw the ball back into play. And guess what? Owen Hewlett knocked the ball down to himself, tried to chase it up, but the ball goes over for a boundary throwing. Boundary umpire to throw the ball back into play right where he was. So the Stone Cats are up by 11 points. tackle applied, ball falls free it was taken away there by Lockie Wallace and uh, the, the, it was going to be taken away, the siren went at quarter time it is Stone Tats, Frankston YCW3 in controversial circumstances on Thursday night and courtesy of Bendigo Bank Alan Tomjanovic beat Serena Williams knocked her out yeah, and Serena gave a uh, an eight-minute speech and didn't congratulate her opponent once. So thanks, thanks, Jim. Thanks for that, Serena. Neil yeah. hit the Neil hit the nail on the head on the locker room this morning. Uh, Serena Williams is uh, is just is talking about her favourite subject herself. Mm, absolutely, we're not too far away from a start here in the second quarter. Spectators just making their way off the ground. Big quarter this one for Bomb Beach, I think. If they let YCW grab themselves a lead, it's going to be really hard to fight back, of course. I know when I say this, people are going to bring up the exceptions, but it's not often second-half comebacks happen in finals. So we're underway here in the second quarter. Ball comes out. Kale's over it. Diaz for the Stone Cats. Goonan by hand back to Diaz. Going to go inside, forward 50, looking for Trout back on the lead. Ball bounces in front of him. He butters back up. Done. Bomb Beach. He evades one tackle. He comes out wider. Douglas. Over to Armitage. He goes on his left. He's gone up the line. He's found Liam Hewlett. Probably the sixth kick for Armitage and the first one that's actually gone down the ground. His previous five have gone across to set up during the middle of the ground. Bomb Beach go inside, forward 50, looking for Fisher. Goes over the back. Tackle evaded. Calvin Lee goes over to McDonald. But they're going to rebound here. YCW through Goonan. They've got plenty of run in their legs. YCW, they've missed the target, though. Ball over the back. Butlin, he evades one. Probably should have got a high tackle. He's just been awarded it now. Advantage taken, Robertson. Oh, that was no advantage there. Uh, the ball's gone out of bounds on the full, and the player in David Armitage will be able to repel for Bomb Beach. He's gone inboard looking for Jackson Casey. Got to be able to clear here, Bomb Beach. Got to be able to set up a score. So they've gone cross goals the whole way. Done. He goes up. With a chisel of it, goes over the back. Ball bouncing. Gregory, Gregory was there for YCW. 
tackle applied on him. And we're going to get another stoppage inside the centre square here at Olympic Park, Bossy. No change to the quarter time score. It is 11 points in favour of YCW. Looking to go forward. A bit of a rugby scrum now. The ball falls through. Jackson Casey just chucks it on the boot. Goes to half. Look at the mark's been taken in front. There for Frankston YCW to kick out towards Robertson, who's, who's been prominent, trying to get some movement through the YCW defence to try and get them going forward. He went in short. Mark has been taken. And that was, I think that was Wayne Malone who took the mark in actual fact. Good tackle applied over the line. And in fact, Luke Verbal was the man who all over after an incorrect disposal. So the boundary up to throw the ball back into play. Great view of this in, boys, right in front of our broadcast caravan. Courtesy of Bendigo Bank, 5 for 93 Zimbabwe in the cricket chase, 141. Of course, AJ's favourite stat, another throw-in. So we have 30 in the first quarter, and this will already be the fifth stoppage. <laughs> AJ's thrilled about it. Bound round pie throws the ball back in from small. Taken away for Stone Tats, kicking short. Was that a free kick? No, says the umpire. Ball on the ground. Corrigan was tackled. And... The umpire has set ball up right in the way we're broadcasting. And uh, both sides just sort of just letting each other know they're around. It's a bit of push and shove as ball is knocked down by Schmidt. Just smothered off the boot now. It comes back and now goes forward for YCW towards full forward. Going up and is that a mark? Yes, it is. There is a mark directly in front of goal, 25 metres out from goal. Good grab from Matty Troutbeck. Yeah, he's been really good. He attacked a contest in the first quarter as well. And one of the Bond Beach boys, I think, kind of let him get to it a little bit easy when Blake Delane shakes one. And since then, he's taken three really good marks. 3-1 clearances in terms of YCW, in favour of YCW, I should say, in this quarter, as well as 3-1 to one inside 50s. So do it for Buzzer over in Vietnam there, Matty Troutbeck. He has a shot. He has put it through. First goal, all important first goal of the second quarter goes to the Stone Cats. 4 1 25, Bomb Beach 1 2 8. We've played four and a half minutes. That is on the Premier Traditional Home scoreboard. Now that is a good goal kicking technique. Plenty of momentum through the ball. Yes, the ball swirled a little as is to be expected because of the winds, but really, really beautiful goal kicking technique there. Ran straight, kick straight once again, Bossy. The basics of footy. 150 years they've lasted and good goal kicking is good footy. 4-1 to 1-2. Good we'll start YCW and Bond Beach. I think the hand would be hovering over the panic button, not quite being pushed yet. Ball thrown up. Schmidt doing the rough work for YCW. He's been dominant early. Armitage taking in a tackle. Sorry, it was Jackson Casey. And we'll get another stoppage once again. Boys, let's just keep an eye on the, the ruck contest here between Bailey Schmidt and Sam Gilbert. Smith's just uh, been all over him. I've, uh, I've been bang on about it, but he needs they need to make a change there. Just play him as a sec as an on-baller as well, but you need to get uh, Liam Hewlett or Owen Hewlett into the ruck, I think, and just give that a, a little bit of a different option because Bailey Smith's just using his big frame. Yeah, he's just getting front position and almost doing the basketball tip-off uh, off two steps, isn't he? And just as he does it again there. So, yeah, a bit of a worry there for Bomb Beach. Yeah, we're going to get another stoppage. Blake Mullane at the bottom of the pack. I think you'll find, I, I reckon I've just seen Liam Hewlett might be told he's going to have a run in the ruck. That's better from Gilbert, especially around the ground. He needs to jump over him. Done for Bomb Beach. He brushes off one, can't brush off two. And that is holding the footy. Advantage has been paid. Oh, he stopped. No. That, that now, that's good umpiring, though, because if the player thinks that the advantage has stopped, that can't be prior opportunity if he doesn't know. That's oh. a really good decision. He went about five or six steps there and then decided to stop. It was a correct decision. They were hoping the umpire would give it back to where the free kick originally was, but no, correct decision made there. Opportunity for Robert on the right foot. He goes to the high kick. It fades away. It goes towards the pocket. It is going to be a contest there right deep in the YCW forward line, but the umpire says that holding the ball decision, it will go to Bond Beach. 
And they trail at the moment by 17 points. Premier traditional home scoreboard. It's 25 to 8 in favour of the Stone Cats. Boys, you reckon it just looked a lot worse because the ball got over the back? Potentially. And he was still running onto it? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that's possible, but better for the doubt to the player is something I am well and truly in favour of. So we're going to get another throw in on the far side, 50 metre line there. So we've just ticked over seven minutes and this will be the 12th stoppage of the quarter. Thank you, Daz, for providing all the stats for Bendigo Bank. Badge of the morning to match of the day. So you Jones Lapino best on ground. Ball comes to the back. Inside 50, the Stone Cats go once again. Lambert on to Goonan. He goes a goal, but he's missed. So YCW 4 2, 26, Bomb Beach 1 2 8. We've been playing seven and a half minutes. Premier Traditional Home Scoreboard. I lauded Bomb Beach's clearance work in that first quarter. They were up 12 to 6. It's now 13 to 11 in total. So. Uh, YCW have woken up around the stoppages and right now are looking like the championship team we suspect that they might be in a fortnight's time. To get out of defence. YCW looking to put Bomb Beach to the sword or could have put them to the sword potentially with a couple of goals. But they've had chances to kick in this quarter. As it is, a high kick will come back inside by Brenton Lamb, but it was. Towards half forward, the mark has been taken 50 metres out from goal. And the man who's got it is Josh Butland, who's already kicked one goal. And he will go back and kick from right half forward flank. We couldn't be in a better spot to watch this. Pretty concerning that a, that a forward can run into a bit of a precarious spot. Kind of went back with the flight, given his angle, and he was under so little pressure from all angles, he was able to jump up and take a chest mark. So here we go with Josh Butland. He's going for goal number two. He just walks around. The man on the mark there just to try and maybe get a bit more distance on the kick. But as he did that, the kick went off target and threw from behind. So Bomb Beach up by 19 points. 4 3 27. Bomb Beach 1 2 8. I know we always to Jones with Pino best on ground for mine at this current point, Luca Goonan. He's been fantastic, hasn't he? I think that's pretty hard to argue at this point in time. If we do want to go to the opposition, I think Bo Bailey's been the only one that's done something with every distance for Bomb Beach. So ball, Blake Mullaney trying to go inside forward, 50, tackle applied on the Bomb Beach player, was in the way of Jackson Casey, he picks up the footy, intercepted by Lilac, quick kick by Hutchinson, smothered, goes forward, standing in the way was Matt Hira, that's a great mark, opposed to Shane McDonald, gave him a little bit too. They've just set up the wall, YCW, haven't they? Bomb Beach just cannot break through. Who can stand there? Two Bomb Beach players run into each other. Diaz. Fisher's ball smothered. Diaz picks it up once again. Quick hands over to Hutchison. He can have a shot on goal. If he can get around, he can. He goes in. Just taking the mark there. The player, I think it is Nick Waterston. They're hanging Boss, on. That's wet rock. That's fent. That is the kind of desperation you need come final time. That's something that can lift your teammates. Diving mark on the goal line. So he's gone out the far side. And it's going to be intercepted. Kyle Hutchison, by the way, probably could have just about been penalised and going too far in actual fact. Inside forward 50, they go. The Stone Cats. Free kicks being given by the non officiating umpire. And it's going to go the way of Bomb Beach. Just round the ground for Bendigo Bank. Karingal 5-3-33 up on Somerville 2-4-16. So Karingal, like we said, looking to avenge their qualifying final performance. Look like they're doing so. And it looks like Brisbane are going to beat Carlton in the VFL semi-final. They're up by two goals, 31 minutes into the last quarter. Zimbabwe 5 for 112 in the cricket. Chasing 141. Still one more week. You think there still could be a few tricks for them to try to get to that target, but... As it is, they're looking okay at this stage. So, Bailey Schmidt, it was, got the, the ball over towards his teammate. Now they fiddle around with it. Now they're going to get the ball through Credlin. So, BJ Credlin just chucks on the left foot, goes to half forward with the kick. It's going to be picked up and taken forward by Douglas. It was towards half forward. But YCW well and truly set up the wall down there. There's a beautiful kick out towards the broadcast wing. 
Mark Taken, you by the Exton Kilda player in Dylan Robertson. He went to half forward, ball knocked down. Now an opportunity for the Stone Cats again. Bomb Beach are being asked a lot of questions at the moment. They just need to try and hang on and try to maybe get on the scoreboard themselves. It's 19 points and it really, it, it could just about be 40 points at the moment, boys. Absolutely. Handball off from Lee. Going pass was Casey. He goes up looking for Fisher. And we're going to get a throw in once again. I'll tell you what, boys, I really like uh, the cut of his jib of Calvin Lee. He put himself in a dangerous position. He stood up at Dylan Robinson coming from behind. He did try to take the ball at the highest point, and when you do that, as any forward in the best position, you're probably either going to take the mark or get a chop of the arms, as he did on that occasion. The ball comes to ground. Players over it. Umpire circles, and we'll call for it. Another stoppage once again, Daz. Yeah, we should have brought the uh, mini cricket bat with us this afternoon to celebrate the half ton. We'll be approaching it at this stage. Looks like we're going to get there at about the time on. So Huel it into the ruck for Bomb Beach. Uh, stoppage, I should say. Free kick's going to go the way of Shane McDonald. He plays on. He's going to go long inside 450. Who can stand up and take a mark? Ball comes to ground. BJ Credlin has it. Tackle applied. Top of the goal square, and we'll get another stoppage. Won the last three clearances, Bomb Beach, so they're just creating chances. They've just got to kick one. 4 3 27 YCW. 1 2 8 Bomb Beach. Ball comes out. Mullane. And it goes over. And we'll get another throw in. So, 14 minutes in the second quarter. Of all the teams I've seen, to be able to win the ball and then rush forward as a team, I haven't seen any better than YCW, and it's why they went 16 and 2 in the home and away season. Hand pass to himself there was by Hutchison. Got the ball over now. There was a chain of hand passes. They went up to the centre of the ground. They're still trying to go forward. That kick was smothered off the, the ground now. Shane McDonald getting the ball, and he'll go over there. Hand pass over the top out towards the boundary line, and in fact, it goes over for a boundary throw in. Between wing and left half 40 for Bomb Beach, who trail on the scoreboard by 19 points. Just a reminder tomorrow, Mount Elias are playing Frankston Bombers at Baxter Park. First semi final, winner through to the prelim, loser out. Hutchison goes along with a kick towards half forward. Looking there for a teammate there in Troutbeck, but it's not marked. Now still an opportunity for the Stone Cats to try to work their way through. They have. They're, the free kick is a play on decision. Oh, that's Advantage true. given. Now they've gone in circles and they don't know where to go. The ball is still about 40 metres out and Bomb Beach will actually clear. The ball fell free. The Stone Cats player in Kaya Deesa was. He had the opportunity to go for goal and he got totally lost. And now instead, the ball has gone all the way down the other end of the ground. Instead of being a 25-point margin, it is a 13-point uh, margin, AJ. Absolutely. It was a great chase from Luke Payne, but not able to uh, affect that. Jack Sullivan kicking the goal. So uh, good momentum for Bomb Beach. They've been um, pressing there for a while. Oh, I've liked the fact that they've put uh, Owen Hewlett into the ruck around the ground at times. He just looks a better matchup for Bailey Schmidt. I'd even like to see, uh, so it's good to see that Sam Gilbert is playing in the midfield. It's just a, a pure midfielder at the moment. I'd, I'm always like to see him across half back, just to steady up for this last um, part of the second quarter, Does? Yeah, I like it. He's a beautiful user of the footy, as we know. And uh, Bon Beach as well. Four of the last six inside fifties, three of the last four clearances. I'll get another one here, courtesy of a free kick. That wonderful word in finals footy, momentum. Yeah, Jackson Casey, he goes inside forward 50, looking for Joe Fisher. Couldn't take the mark. Ball comes to ground. Bo Bailey by hand. Tackle applied straight away. Slips out, though. So YCW are able to exit the defensive 50, but it's going to be turned over. Zimbabwe 6 for 115 in the cricket, Daz. Bo Bailey's got it. Thanks, Ross. No worries at all. 20, I didn't want to talk over AJ, so they'll have 26 to win. Zimbabwe, which will be a, oh, an interesting watch. So Kyle Hutchison has the footy. He's going to come out wide of Matt LaFontaine. I haven't called his name too many times. So Lapper's got the footy. What's he going to do? He's going to go up. 
to a contest. Big mark. Matt Troutbeck, he's asserting his dominance on the game up forward. Putting his name in contention for the Jones Lapino best on ground. Forward to centre, he's been the most dominant player. He goes long. Pachulo, but it's all Bomb Beach there. Douglas has the footy. He goes backwards. Done. He goes inboard with a great kick. Finding Verma. He goes out wider looking for Bo Bailey. He's got it. Once again, he's been prominent today. Goes looking for Joe Fisher. Byron Barry just gets his hand in there late. Couldn't take the mark. Ball comes to ground. Right, he goes forward. So they've got a bit of momentum here, Bomb Beach. Got one on one to enter the footy. Hewlett has it. His brother Owen's looking for it. He's got a matchup that he likes against Matt LaFontaine. If he can get over the back, he likes it, and that's the well, one. That's why you get it in quickly. And that's exactly why Owen Hewlett wanted the footy above his head. He had the reach. He had the size on Matt LaFontaine, and he's taken a mark. He can go back and look for Palm Beach. It's third goal of the afternoon. And if he kicks it, it's back to seven points, Bossy. It is. Just when YCW were doing all the attacking to start this second quarter, Palm Beach had a chance to score their second in a row. There is a shot, and there is a goal. So the margin is back to seven points. It's, uh, it's Owen Hill who put that one through. So 3 2 20 Bomb Beach, 4 3 27 Frankston YCW. And all of a sudden, we've got a much more level of game, boys. Yeah, we do. Bomb Beach across halfback. Both teams are setting up the wall really well. And when they had the mismatch, like we said, all the kick had to do was get some air time and a, and a fantastic grab. And just around the ground for Bendigo Bank as well. Kringle up 14 points. But Somerville have had more scoring shots. So volatile Vossi might be right itself but this looks like a cracker boys we wanted uh, 2719 that's Somerville 5333 Karingle wow. but we did call on Bond Beach to respond in this second quarter and they have the ball's back in the middle Pachulo in the ruck for the Stone Cats against that goal kicker and Owen Hewlett ball comes out Jimmy Cahill tries to burst through he can't umpire calls holding the ball they've been red hot on that this quarter and I don't reckon they've got one wrong yet So Lachlan Stenning has the footy. He goes short looking for McDonald who takes the mark. So the momentum going all the way at Bomb Beach here in late in the second quarter. Fisher has the footy. Bo Bailey, very prominent. He goes over the top. And it looks like he's found Trent Dennis Lane. YCW getting drawn into the contest. They had three defenders uh, go to... Well, they had two defenders, sorry, go to Shane McDonald there originally, and they had three go to Bo Bailey when he kicked that footy. So they're trying to attack the man with the footy, but that only works when the ball's in dispute. YCW got to be careful. Owen Hill had snuck down once again. He had a, a pretty favourable matchup. They didn't go to him. Dennis Lane. He has a shot on goal, and he loves it. <laughs> and there's a good reason why, boys. Bomb Beach get their fourth of the afternoon. I was from about 40, 45 out. The absolute worst spot for a right footer. And the goal umpire did not move. That's an outstanding kick. So that brings the margin back to a point. So Bomb Beach, all the momentum in this second quarter. Dare I say it, it's been when Owen Hewlett's been into the ruck. Oh, so he's just evened up the contest. He's hunting credit now, man. I see you noticing this. Nearly an AJ's. Well, as soon as he's got... everyone else's glory. Oh. <laughs> I've been calling it from the start. And Brisbane fans, they can be doubly happy this weekend with a win over Carlton in their VFL semi-final, so they'll go through. So, fall back in the middle. Casey dispossessed. Goonan. Jackson Casey puts his head over the footy once again. There were some appeals for in the back, but nothing forthcoming from the umpire. I said around time on, well, if we're stealing each other's glory, about time on, we'd hit the 50th stoppage. That was the 50th one then. So Pachulo, he has a fresh airy. Hutches and he's dumped into the ground. He's in a bit of trouble in the middle of the ground, boys. Painter over to Matt LaFontaine. 
He can roll and go. He goes in looking for Troutbeck. If it gets over the back, it doesn't. Ball comes to ground. McDonald by hand. Better defensive work from the Sharks. Liam Hewlett over his head. Ball comes out big. Tip and shoulder by Kevin Lilac on Luke Verma. And we'll get another throw in. Yeah, Bond Beach is back six. Much like we said last week, looking really settled. They've settled into this contest beautifully. YCW are plus four in inside 50s, but they just can't break through at the moment. So 22 minutes in the second quarter. It's a one-point margin in favour of the Stonecats. And 10 minutes ago, well, they were a chance to potentially get this out to 30, 40 points, I was calling. But Palm Beach have really stiffened up their resolve and they're really having a, a fair dink of day now, boys. Using the ball a bit better. Gaining a bit of territory. And all of a sudden we have a ball game on the cards. Yeah, they're spreading the ground really well, aren't they, Vossi? And what's really impressing me is once they're getting centre forward, they're not slowing down, they're speeding up, putting YCW under the pump. Ball thrown back into play, knocked over once again for another boundary throwing. Left half forward for Bon Beach. 4 2 26. Plays 4 3 27. Wouldn't mind having him out there, Vossi. Chair. He's going be handy, wouldn't he? Big ball. Good man, Mitch. How is he? Yeah, rather off. Rather off. Probably, probably don't want that acronym. No, I was going to say probably Paul. Probably. Well, I don't know how he, if, he, if he can say it, but he's probably as good as Darren, if not better. The last ever game he played for Tramana, which I think might have been 2015. Played a final down at Rye. It was the first semi-final, and he took a fantastic mark. He took a, he took a mark. It was like those. You know the mark, if you know local football, you know the mark I'm talking about. He was like spring Jack, Jackie. Got up high for that one. And our man, uh, our man Rab took some uh, took some photos of that. There was some really good shots of it too. So, uh, good play, Mitchell. Good play too. Absolutely. So free kicks going the way. Liam Hewlett. I didn't, didn't think I'd say this, Hojo, but they're a chance to get in front. They look very dangerous going forward. The yeah. big boys of Bomb Beach certainly putting their uh, stamp on the game. Almost like you need tools to do well in finals. Oh, I've been banging on about that as well, Daz. You have, mate. You have. Oh, I don't want to curse him. But I'm backing him in. Beautiful. Yeah. There we go. Oh, and he loves it. As you would, Daz. Oh. Sit, when that left the boot, that just looked like a goal. Yeah, it's like an arrow, wasn't it? And Bond Beach now, they were losing the inside 50 count. Sorry, they were leading the inside 50 count for all of that first quarter without reward. Uh, that is now only there. I'll just do some quick math. That is their eighth inside 50 now for their fourth goal. So that's much better efficiency what we were calling out for at quarter time. And, and people will ask us, will have YCW stopped? No, they're still putting up a heck of a fight. They're still leading the clearances, still leading the inside 50s. It's just once they're hitting the wall of Bond Beach, they're not able to get through. And on the other side, Bond Beach looking so potent up forward. They deserve this lead, well and truly. Amazingly, Bomb Beach are in front. Ten minutes ago, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have thought it, that's for sure. Three minutes, left, three minutes left in this quarter, Bossy. They, they can potentially get another goal or two. Be two or three in front by half time, the way they're going in. Against the wind, too. Going at half forward, Mark Taker by Trent Dennis Lane. He's a kick and a half out from goal. Goes towards full forward, going back and take the mark. Calls to the mark, and he dropped it. Oh, that's stiff. He said dropped less it. than that. Joseph that, Fisher. Is that Joe Fisher it yeah, was? It was. I thought he'd done enough to take that, but he dropped it. The umpire said that. No, you didn't hold it long enough. Ball over the line for a boundary throw in. 19 clearances to 13. This is, uh, sorry, 18 clearances to 13. This is a huge problem now for YCW. So, quick kick out of defence there by a Byron Barry. It was out towards half back. Now, YCW looking to try and lift themselves here. They've been challenged at the moment. For the first time in the game, they're really uh, getting asked some questions by a Bomb Beach side that are determined. They're not going to give this one away. They've got the opportunity to go through to a grand final by winning this game. Both sides have an actual fact, but it's just a real opportunity for them and looking for an 
opportunity now to, to get themselves a chance to, to win their first grand final in 40 years. Near and up. YCW 4 3 27, Bomb Beach 5 2 32. If you're just joining us, YCW are out to a, I think it was almost a four goal lead there at, at one stage, boys. And, and, it, could have, and it could have really been yep. 30 or 40 yeah. points. Shane McDonald, um, no, sorry, my apologies, I was uh, the further stopper. Yeah, yeah, they had a shot, didn't they, from. YCW here that should have put them 23 points up that they couldn't convert. Uh, speaking of converting, Somerville are getting themselves back. As the sign goes, so I just finished the scoreline. So Kringle 5-5-35, Somerville 3-7-25. So that game tightening up as well in Division 2. It's going to be a passionate second half here too, boys. Bomb Beach 4-2. Yeah, good over straightening up, Daz. YCW 4-3 had to happen. So the third quarter about to get underway. And I think we've got a... Uh, a stoppage quota as well. We had 30 in the first half, 29 in the second, so we're on pace for uh, 118 as Bossy's just touching <laughs> Master Santovich's head for some I reason. Just, I was just trying to annoy him. Then. We're just making sure that he's not scrolling TikTok, the great man. He's not at the moment, but looking forward to getting us underway. Michael Voss? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, plenty of good sport happening and, uh, what, a six pack. Five bucks a week. Silver membership. Absolutely. So we're just about to get underway here. Third quarter, second half. Sam Gilmer back into the ruck. Bailey Schmidt easily won that hit out. And we'll get another stoppage. Blake Malay was tackled. Oh, look out. Stoppages have started already. That's unlike the MPNFL football does. AJ's favourite stat. Once again, ball thrown up. Malay put his head over the footy once again. Oh, you wouldn't bring oh, about no it. No way. Stoppage. <laughs> Pace, aren't we? Goodness me. Smith, Gilbert, easily won by Smith. Tackle applied. Hutchison. This will be the fourth, and we've moved about a metre and a half. Big first five, ten minutes here, boys. We saw how quickly momentum can change in the space of half a quarter. So it's going to be a free pick. Picked out here, going the way of Shane McDonald. Zimbabwe 7 for 138 in the cricket. Mitch so Jen. Still, still work to do. <laughs> Jeepers. So Miss Jen has the footy. He's going to drive it long inside forward 50. Looking for Joe Fisher. He comes out. Ball goes over the back. Comes down to Sinclair. Over to Bo Bailey. Shot at goal. And that's oh. gone through. So Bomb Beach get the first of the th third quarter. They're 6 2 38. YCW 4 3 27. Last five goals what. of the game to Palm Beach, and, mm. and they've got a they've got a little mini break here of eleven points. Yeah, they sure do. I'm just wondering if the Frankston YCW boys have actually set their alarm because they haven't woken up at all in the last sort of fifteen minutes of play here in Palm Beach. I mean, you just got to take your hat off to them. It's you can't really call it um, an upset or a surprise given the quality of footy they've put out in the last six to eight weeks. No one happier than AJ who saved his mortgage. And I'll give you a little history lesson. These two suits and sides played in the second semi-final in 2013. Bomb Beach won that one. Went straight through to the grand final. And I'll give you the rest in a minute. As they are looking to go forward down. They go long through Blake Malone towards full forward. There's a mark. Top of the goal square, 15 metres out from goal. So that this should be a goal on the board for YCW. Bomb, uh, Bomb Beach won the second semi-final. YCW, of course, lost and went to the prelim. And, of course, YCW got knocked out. And history says that a little fella, a little fella now playing for the Western Bulldogs, playing half-back tonight in the game in Perth, dominated in the grand final. Him and Tim Mannix dominated in the grand final in EFL 1. So All-Australian 2021, All-Australian Bailey Dale. Been a very good player. Told you was skinny back then. He has a shot and he puts it through for a goal. Should give him credit, Josh Petullo, I think it was. So Josh Petullo is the man who scored the goal. So that's their first goal for a while. The Frankston YCW side, they're up to six goals. In fact, they're up to if five you... goals, 333 play, 6238. I mean, if you're drawing out the easiest way to score in footy, clearance inside 50, mark top of the goal square is pretty much the uh, most efficient way to do it. So, all righty, we've got a game on. Both teams have woken up. Let's do it. This is going to be a cracking finish. So, ball back to the middle. 
So I suppose if anyone could lose that game at cricket, I hope we don't have any Zimbabweans listening to our coverage, but uh, if anyone could lose that, it's probably them. Third quarter's just started in the prelim final as well. Karingal have kicked the first goal. They're 6 6 42, up 4 7 31 on Somerville. Ball thrown up in the middle. Like the can. Bailey the Schmidt. wind, the wind. <laughs> Where are we at? <laughs> Matt LaFontaine, he was met. He's down. So the Palm Beach players applied some heat on him. He's, He's still, still down, down there. Has not moved. He's so it's certainly a hot contest, Mitch Gent. He's just moved the footy about 15 metres. He's had four goes that lift in his head there. The ball's deep inside the forward 50. Ball it up and stop the game. And it's gone out of bounds on the full here yeah, according free. to the umpire so I reckon it's going to be a free kick the way Bomb Beach no it looks yeah. like it's going to go the way of the stone catch the two Bomb Beach players are just looking at each other here yep Matty Luff on tone so the way that's of Bomb good Beach now. yeah he's up and about so fingers crossed he's okay and can play the game out one goal this fan. quarter for Bomb Beach and one for YCW. We've got a singing quota today, do we, boys? Interesting. So Stone Cats just maybe just trying to step things up the, tr the pressure a little bit after falling asleep a little bit. That's a goal. Oh, well, that's a great kick. He was down two minutes ago. You wanted him off the ground, stretch it off, Daz. And look, <laughs> he's up and he kicks the goal. Matty LaFontaine and he puts the Stone Cats back in front. That'll cheer buzzer up over in, uh, over in Vietnam, won't it? He looked half dead out here at the, it was at the 50 meter mark. that's a fantastic finish across his body so yeah i think he's all right boys uh using my non-medical background but if we've learned anything in the last two years it's that people are allowed to use those but goodness me yeah absolutely he got the uh the magic spray and he's all right that's one step i reckon he's kicked that about 40 in the uh, goal umpire barely moved fantastic finish boys i feel like we're going to get an absolute cracker mm. this afternoon so nearly six minutes gone to the third quarter. Ball thrown back up. Bailey Smith wins that easily. Ball comes out to Blake Mullane. He gets the ball going forward. It's a race between two. Big Shepard applied. In by CW going. They get another one. Christian Sampas. That's the He's second. Got his second. That's the and also that's the second time that Blake Mullane's just kicked it into space towards him and just let him run onto it. Those little, he's that little, he's that fast. It's like putting an outboard motor on a pen. He just absolutely took off. That's a fantastic finish. Both from identical spots on the ground. He's first was in the first quarter. To be able to settle, take the two or three relaxed steps and kick it. Fantastic. And they've well and truly woken up now, YCW. Boss, have you ever seen an outboard motor on a pen? It's a good analogy, though. Really nice. uh, it's a good analogy, that one, though. Mm. Uh, Christian Sampas, by the way, that's his uh, second goal. He's the first multiple goal scorer on the ground for either side this afternoon. So YCW all of a sudden, after being 11 points down, Bomb Beach have now got some work to do. They need to step up their pressure because what YCW certainly have. Yeah, Ball was Kyle, Kyle of Hutchison. So the 200-plus game of theirs got the kick smothered down. It'll go forward for Bomb Beach inside attacking 50. And is that a mark? No, says the umpire. I thought it was in front, not to be. Trying to charge through there. Hewlett getting the hand pass off towards, I think that was Casey who fell to ground. And the umpire says, I'm going to throw it back into play. Right in front of the Rosebud club rooms. Boys, I'm going to harp on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Bomb Beach took a far better side when Gilbert's in the midfield, not in the ruck. Yeah, spot on. And it's reflected in the clearances as well. So it's three all to start the third quarter in the clearances. But YCW have already had four inside fifties. This is only Bomb Beach's second. This is a simple thing. I'll ask that in a minute, actually. It's, it's about Sam Gilbert. I'll, I'll bring it up in a minute because the ball's still in play. Oh, it has to be was tackled a bit slow there, Bizer. He lost control. Wasn't given as a free kick, though. Good tackle applied by Joe Fisher. No, no penalty there, no free kick. Is it as simple as playing Sam Gilbert as to say, on the, Sam Gilbert as a ruckman, to say, then they've got potentially Armitage, Casey and maybe Mitch Jen having all four of them on the ball and to get all four of them on the ball. Is that why they're doing it? Uh, I'd say so. That's, you, you've got an extra midfielder running around, but 
when you've got a dominant ruckman like Bailey Schmidt who's controlling the tap work mm. and you can see how easy YSW are scoring off it, Yep, you, you've got to go back to what was making you uh, a far better side in that second quarter with Owen Hewlett in the ruck. Yeah, and to have someone of Sam Gilbert's height to be able to shark those hitouts if they do lose it as well is ultra, ultra important. I'll tell you what, it's not only YCW have woken up here, boys. The crowd have too. It's gotten bigger in this third quarter and the vocals, they're getting loud. So... And, and to be honest, it, it could be an example of Sam we can go forward. Put him out of the goal square for five minutes and just see, because he could, t he can take a mark and he could cause some damage up there. Oh, well, they were out, too. They're going to get away with it. That's the versatility he has. He can play mm. everywhere on the ground. But last week in the ruck, he was good, but it, it, he's coming up against a different he's beast. Great right kick. That's a good kick, and the mark's taken by Trent Dennis Lane, forward pocket, 40 metres out from... Dull, tough kick. Well, he's kicked an absolute ripper in that second quarter, didn't he, from the pocket that didn't favour a right footer, did Trent Dennis Lane. So what's really impressing me about Bond Beach is they're minus six and in inside 50s for the game. They're ahead in this quarter uh, now. Sorry, they've evened it up in this quarter, which is impressive. But their efficiency inside 50 is going to keep them in this game. And he can kick this. Seven points is the margin in favour of the Stone Cats. Oh, no. Oh, that's an absolute shocker. Even the men who go to the AFL boys, sometimes what? they let you down. And Trent Dennis Lane, that's a shocker of a kick. How would you sum that up, Michael Boss? Shison. Oh, I thought you'd go with Stinky. You usually <laughs> drop that one. Oh, that's Shison. Definitely Shison. Okay. Uh, the, hard, the harder the kick, the better he hits them, TDL. I give it a one out of ten only because he kicked rather than air past it. But one out of ten. <laughs> I'm yeah. being generous. He gets one for hitting his foot. Really good tackle, too. Oh, boy. Not a good kick. It's going to work out, Verma. He goes with a high up and under. Joe Fisher, Hewlett, come at it. No one can take the mark. Ball's on the ground, Bo Bailey. Could it work out? It's been escorted out. We'll get a throw in. I think they got the luxury, Bomb Beach, of... Not having to worry about Sam Gilbert playing in the midfield as well. Like, you can rest him forward, you can put him off half back. They have an abundance of midfielders. But Trent Dennis Lane is a lead up forward and, and he's hitting the ball up at about 30 to 40 metres out. So you can play Sam Gilbert out of the goal square for five minutes and just see if he can turn the, the momentum around. Yeah, spot on. Can't argue with that at all. And he's creating a, another holding the ball decision here to the Stone Cats. Yeah, I agree with you, but it's just. Where they put him, I think they do need to keep him for a, a substantial period of time. I know he's a quality player, and anyone who's gone to AFL standards, I don't care how many games he played, is automatically a, an extremely good footballer, but you still need continuity in your position on the ground, I believe. So make a choice and, and stick to it. I think it's the way to go. So Lila went to Angwin. Angwin goes up towards... The centre wing for Frankston YCW. The ball goes towards the line and goes over. So it's the Stone Cats up by seven points. 7 3 45. A bit like Mel what Melbourne did last night. Melbourne started the second half very well, scored three goals early. Stone Cats have done that. And then Melbourne fell apart last night. So we are 12 minutes into this third quarter. We've had 21 stoppages. Call it as I say it, Big Chief. Uh, scores from around the ground. Kringle have kicked away 9-6-60. Some will 4-7-31. So Mitch Gent, he goes with a handball over to Liam Hewlett. He's tackled by Henry Beringer. Umpire has put the whistle away here in the third quarter. Lilac, he tries to break through. He's dumped. Fisher applies a tackle. Smith goes forward with a scrubber. Stampus is all over it. Gilbert. Quick clearing kick going high and under. Who's going to stand under it? Robertson comes over the top and fists the ball out and we'll get a throw in. I actually apologise. It was the 11th, not the 21st stoppage, but we'll make it 12. But yeah, the umpires are really hot on holding the ball in that second quarter, weren't they, boys? And they've seemingly put it away. Boys, Zimbabwe have won. Yeah, I hope there are some embarrassing. Yeah, I hope there are some repercussions for that because, and I mean this with all due respect to Zimbabwe, but you can't have one of the better white ball sides in the world uh, losing to a, a team no one suspected to do anything. So I hope there are repercussions and consequences for that kind of performance. Only two players making single digits, uh, double you digits. Sorry. Aaron Finch. I think he, I think you got to well, fish rots at the head, doesn't it, Vossie? And 
Finch has only made 21 runs or 38 balls in, in three games, and he's been pretty poor for a year, so the boy all, from Colac. All thrown back in. Lockie Wallace attacking the footy. Sorry to get another throw in. You want to come to every game? More than welcome, Finchie. We're about an hour away from the start of Collingwood and Geelong. And as uh, AJ said, Keringle have kicked away. They near double the score of Somerville, 9862 to 4731. Courtesy of Bendigo Bank. So Sam Gilbert fends off. Fends off one, but can't fend off two. That is holding the footy. That's the epitome of Cole holding Hutchison. the footy. Strong tackle. Our man, Pogo, last week said that some all played well the last three quarters. And we're looking forward to them playing next week. And they've the they decided potentially to challenge them all. Kringle have gone whack on that, haven't they? Certainly have. Free kick going to go the way of the Stone Cats here. It looks like it's going the way of Butland. So he can go back and enhance the Stone Cats' lead here in the third quarter. We've played nearly 14 and a half minutes. Premier Traditional Home Scoreboard. This is your Bachelor World of Mornington match of the day. He's kicked 1-1 one, one, and his last set shot, he ran straight at the right point post and kicked it there. So if he straightens himself up, this should go absolutely straight through. And that has gone across the face of goals. Sneak in through behind. YCW 446, Bomb Beat 6238. So 24 inside 50s right now to 18 in favour of YCW. So got to give Bomb Beach's back six a bit of credit for holding up here. Doing well at the clearances though, 20 to 18. So Bomb Beach have brought it all the way to half back. They've gone down the line, looking for a target. Both the Hewlett boys were standing there. No mark was taken. Ball comes to the back. Going forward was Tyson Murray with a kick off the ground. Who can run onto it? Shane McDonald. He goes with a handball over the top. Bo Bailey, once again, been fantastic. Ball goes inside forward, 50. But a clearing kick through Bailey Angwin in the middle of the ground. Who can run onto it? Sampus is out there. He tries to turn his opponent. Pachulo, he goes back to Sampus. He goes by hand, puts his teammate under pressure, and that's got to be holding the footy, and it is. So, Bomb Beach go out to Armitage. We haven't called his name a lot today, boys. No, he's been much quieter than last week. He's gone over the top. Bo Bailey, he's the man that's been fantastic for Bomb Beach once again. Yeah, been their best. He's going to go in short. He was looking for Armitage, and he's found him. They roll on. They can go inside forward 50 with a chisel, looking for Trent Dennis Lane, and they've found him. So better movement by Bomb Beach. He plays on and he's missed. So it's just not happening for TDL today. He's kicking them beautifully everywhere but that far pocket, isn't he? He's got his hands on a few. Kicking is the part of his hand that's letting him down at this stage. Still plenty of time. Margin is seven points in favour of Frankston YCW. The Stone Cats up. <laughs> 46 to 39, 17 minutes played in the third quarter. Short pass, mark taken. And it's been taken by Jimmy Cale. Who can get it and go. And going out towards Matty LaFontaine, who goes up at the back. Oh. Went up for a bridge stone select, mark of the day, but didn't come down with it. Ball comes forward for Bomb Beach towards half forward. Going up was Liam Hewlett, and the ball goes over for a boundary throne. Liam Hewlett is one of Bomb Beach's six individual goal kickers this afternoon. Matty LaFontaine is going to absolutely deserve his uh, ice bath after this, boys. He's been absolutely crunched three times. So, you can even see the size distance at size difference in Smith and Hewlett. Look at the frames between the two Ruckman. So, imagine putting Gilbert next to him. Ball goes inside, forward 50 for the stone catch. Pachulo just pushes opponent in the back, and the free kick's going to go in the way of the fleet. I love the guilty little runaway that he did then. He knew that he'd, uh, he'd done wrong. So, Verma, he's gone out wide. Corrigan. Going the way of the Stone Cats. Going the way of Luca Goonan. He's going to play on. He's going to drive it long inside forward 50. Who can stand up, take a mark? Trout Beck's there. Big pack forms. And it's forward and 
out of bounds, and we'll get another throw in. Yeah, not great from Sean Corrigan, the man that we gave the Jones Lapino best on ground to when we saw them last week. But Stone Cats, that magical word in finals, boys, we know it well. Momentum is back on the Stone Cats. It's up to them to, well, in their mind, put Bond Beach away because we know how much they can come back as they did so in the second quarter. So Bond Beach looking to try and get out of trouble, but it's a free kick. It's holding the ball and it's a free kick. It is going to go to YCW. And the free kick will go, I think it might be going to Josh Tullo, I think. In courtesy of Bendigo Bank, Kringle still up by 31 points on Somerville and the Dogs are 12 points up on Port uh, in the AFLW. So they look like they'll probably get over the line in that one. So margin is seven points. We're just about to hit time on in the third quarter. This to make the margin 13 points if Josh Patullo successfully has hit one goal. And he has put that out of bounds on the ball and that was not a good effort, not his best by a long stretch. Still 7-4-46 YCW, Bomb Beach 6 3 39, and we're about to hit time on. So ball out. And it's going to come back in if YCW, if YCW can fight off the pressure, but it's not going to be... So just quickly for Benigo Bank 2, boys. So the subs have been announced in the Geelong-Collingwood game. Mark O'Connor, the sub for the Cats, usually their tagger, so that's interesting. Collingwood have gone with Nathan Kruger, so they've gone tall with their sub. I reckon that's a fact as if Cameron or Hawkins get off the chain, he'll potentially be able to come on if there's an injury. We're getting a throw in inside the forward 50. For YCW, 7 4 46 playing Bomb Beach, 6 3 39. 20 minutes gone, Premier Traditional Home Scoreboard. Match of the morning, it's a match of the day. It's been a cracking contest so far. Two teams have thrown everything at each other. It was YCW early, then Bomb Beach fought back. They got a lead. Now YCW back in the lead once again. The umpire circles, we're going to call for a stoppage. Another one, you wouldn't dream of it, but the clearances uh, for the game now. Bond Beach have been really impressive around the ball, but they're up 21 19, so the Stone Cats have been able to even that up, and uh, they are plus nine in the inside 50s, the Stone Cats. So, like we say, it's a credit to Bond Beach for holding up as well as they have. So, free kick going the way of Bond Beach. <laughs> He kick this one. Drive it long down the far side. Big pack Forbes. No mark taken. Verma was pushed off the footy. It's got out to Beringer. YCW but go by hand. They've gone to the top of the corridor. Butland. He gets a handball out. The pressure's right up here from both sides. They don't want to concede another one. Bomb Beach. The umpires call for it. We'll have another stoppage inside the forward 50 of the Stone Cats here, boys. If you bomb beach, you got to lock down. Yeah, get to three-quarter time with a manageable um, margin, whether you're in front or behind. Both teams will look at that, and then it'll be get a bit messy in the final quarter. Not sure what's going to happen with the rain, but I think it's going to be a really tight finish, which we cannot wait for. Absolutely. 22 minutes gone. YCW 7446, Bomb Beach 6339. Fierce contest for the last minute or so. Players just diving in everywhere. Umpire's got a circle once again and we'll get another stoppage. Yeah, 80th of the day. So 21 in the quarter already. I know I said that about 10 minutes ago, but I promise you this one uh, is correct. So we had four goals probably in about the first six minutes of this quarter, and we haven't had a goal for about 15 minutes or so. And yeah, we're just having the ball locked up. YCW's in. Bomb Beach just trying to hang on to three-quarter time. So that's their 30th inside 50 YCW, and they've had 11 scoring shots. So ball knocked down by McLean, it was. 
quick kick out of defence, out towards half back, goes through the hands, oh, yeah. out towards centre wing. Weiss W player who might have been Byron Barriott, there might have been tackle without the ball, the umpire said no. And the umpire says I'm going to ball it up. On true centre wing. We, uh, there's a circuit breaker coming. You can feel it. And uh, it's actually, uh, you can actually feel a bit of sun too. The tackle applied. Applied calling for a ball up inside attacking 50 for the Stone Cats who lead by seven points. Not long to go in this quarter, maybe another couple of minutes. 46 to 39. The ball's in the middle of the ground, standing under it was Beringer. He couldn't take the mark. Ball's on the ground. Players dive on him and we'll get another stoppage. So nearly 24 minutes gone in the third quarter. YSW 7446, Bomb Beach 6339. Since quarter time, uh, YCW 14 clearances to Bond Beach's six. So they've certainly worked their way back into it there, Daz. Absolutely. Once again, we'll have another stoppage. Not too far from the cricket pitch here. Wouldn't dream of it. So Bomb Beach don't want to concede another one, but they want to attack and try and get level at three-quarter time. Verma, he goes forward. How's this going to bounce? Tackle applied. Once again, umpire circles, and we'll have another stoppage. You just wouldn't read about it. No, absolutely not surprising us all, but Keringle, 10-9-69, Somerville, 4 8 32, and we know what happened with Keringle and Pearsdale last week, so you never want to go too early with these things, but Keringle setting themselves up for a date with Lang Warren next week. I reckon that game is over. Oh, boy. And the sus doesn't have to go down to Safeway again, Rossi, does he? <laughs> <laughs> it was 37 points, it's near three-quarter time, and they've scored four for the game, and they've got to score seven to get in front. That's over, AJ. All right. Uh, and if, uh, it comes back to haunt me. <laughs> so be it. Uh, big enough shoulders to look after it. They're out here, YCW. Spread the ball. He had to go. Oh, it's a, is it 50? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, okay. I know the player probably went before the umpire's arms were up, but don't like the rule. that's punishing footballing instincts for mine. Do not like the rule. Of course your instincts are going to go to smother the footy because he's going to play on. Yep. Spot on. It might be a momentum shift up. So not much of a reaction there from the Stone Cat supporters. They, I think they probably knew they were pretty lucky to get away with that one. Yeah, and unlike Vossi calling the other game, you don't want to go too early uh, with these sorts of things. But, you know, probably a reward for effort. Um, they've had 31 now inside 50s YCW, so they'll probably bound uh, to get one, albeit under good circumstances, just the 19 inside 50s for Bomb Beach. But they are setting up scores, of course. They've had nine scoring shots for their 19 entries. They're going at nearly 15% uh, compared to the 12 out of 31, which is, of course, just about 38%, boys. So they're more efficient, Bomb Beach. They're just not getting their hands on the pill. YCW have scored eight goals, seven goal kickers they've had. Christian Sampas is their only multiple goal scorer on the ground. Uh, that was Luca Gunanu. And the goal for the Stone Cats are up by 13 points, 27 minutes into the third quarter. Ball to be thrown up. Blake Wayne will take the ball away. He goes with a kick down towards attacking 50. Butland couldn't get to that one. Ball knocked away from him and goes over for a boundary throw in. Will we see a repeat of the second quarter from Bomb Beach heading towards the Eastbourne Road end, boys? Well, selfishly, I hope so. So we can keep it up uh, with a minute to go in the quarter. So they can't afford to concede one more. I don't think and they can rely on wind to do it, though, Daz. I don't think no. it was wind that did it. It was just work rate. Yeah, 100%. I'm with you, Vossi. So there's a quick kick out towards half-back. It's picked up for Palm Beach. 
kick down the line. But it's marked there for YCW and they can play on the kick towards Smith. It was tackles he tried to mark the ball. 45 seconds, they've got to hold up here, Bombay. Try to try and hold on there, only 13 oh, points no. down. And they might find themselves a little bit more down. Is that Butler with the ball? Trapback. It's Trapback with the ball. Back. Jeez, he's been impressive today. I reckon that's his fifth or sixth mark, but... He's either found space, he's crashed packs. He, statistically, it won't look like he's one of the best on the ground, but as far as blokes being impressive goes, he's almost top of the list for mine. So, final kick. Gee. Has the shot, he misses. Probably could have gone back once the siren went and... Reset himself. Yeah, he could have, but... 8-5-53 at three-quarter time, Frankston YCW. They're 14 points clear at Bomb Beach, 6 3 39. That quarter went 28 and a half minutes. You're listening. RWP in the afternoon. Uh, the, the following week, can we get you the roaming buzzard? Well, for the grand final? Yeah. I'd normally take photos. I don't know whether I'll be able to take the photos in the room afterwards, but... So we're not far away from a start here in the fourth quarter. They've thrown Joe Fisher into the ruck, have Bomb Beach. Shane McDonald's going to go to the goal square. I don't mind that. He is the kind of player that can kick three or four and win them the game. Absolutely. Start of the last quarter. The Stone Cats up by 14 points. And it really is... Do or die these first few minutes for Bomb Beach. They need to hit the scoreboard because they haven't hit it for a while. Here's an opportunity for them. They go in short, but it went straight between the two players that was intended for oh, overrun out. by Byron Barry. Oh, a chance they... here for Jackson Casey. He was tackled without wow. the ball. They got away with one there. They had three on one in that contest and missed a handball. It's a fair enough decision. Jackson Case will take the free kick. He's outside 50, so he's kicking a bit out from goal. He goes in short. He's got a teammate there in uh, Owen Hewlett who couldn't take the mark. Ball out towards the boundary line and has gone over. In fact, it's a free kick. And it will go to Bomb Beach. Yes, Chief, you got something? Oh, OK. So descent. you didn't hear that the uh, umpire descent free kick. So it is going the way of Jackson Casey inside forward 50. They go, but filling in the hole was Dylan Robertson. I don't reckon there's anyone on the ground that's done more things correctly than Dylan Robertson today. His maturity down back being really important. He's gone out wide, <laughs> taking the mark. The Stone Cats. like Will Dunn come off with a hamstring injury as well for Bomb Beach. Whether it's his cramp or not, we'll soon find out. Big Bailey Schmidt. Putting his name in contention for the James Lapino best on ground, I think, is his third opponent. He goes longer. He's been good today. Nick Waterstone as well down back for Bomb Beach. Lost his man, Wet Rock. He's gone with a kick in board. He's found Jackson Casey. He's taken the mark. He's getting his hands on it, which is a good sign. Early part of this last quarter, had it a couple of times. So Jackson Casey goes to half forward, and that is a terrible kick. Yeah, he's, he's had three this quarter, and all of them poor. I reckon Calvin Lee was the man he was looking for, but didn't go close to hitting him. YCW will clear. As you like, Dylan Robertson goes down the line. This is a game that YCW will like, because notoriously YCW over the last, what, their dynasty, say the last... Call it 20 years. It's longer than that, but call it 20 years. They pride themselves on a magnificent defence. And at the moment, they've only considered the 39 points, which is what they would like. Corrigan's got it for Bomb Beach. Goes to the kick, tries to centre it out towards half-back. Trying to get the ball over, but the ball falls free. In fact, what's the umpire giving here? He's given a free kick. It's going to go to YCW. And the ball just outside 50. In fact, it's it's 60 out from goal. It's BJ Credlin who's got it. So he goes in towards the pocket. Is that a mark? Yep. Yes, it is. 
Josh Pachulo. Yeah, the so. ball just stopped, didn't it, in the air, which gave him the space playing in front, which you got to do as a forward. So, fifth inside 50 for the quarter for YCW. Bond Beach have just had the one. Uh, sorry, the two, sorry. Josh Petullo has kicked one goal. This to give YCW a big lead in the context of the game. It'll be 20 points if he's successful, and they'll be hard to run down from here, boys. Rest assured. Slow, deliberate approach. I like it. So Josh Patullo, he has the shot. He doesn't make Didn't it like a drop short. And they're still alive here, Palm Beach. They've just got to try and hit the scoreboard. They're getting enough of the ball, but they're not doing much with it. Short pass, mark taken by Tyson Murray. In the back pocket. Ball about 150 metres away from where it should be if you're a Palm Beach supporter, so they just need to move it. Go out towards half-back. No mark was taken. Ball knocked over the line for a boundary throw in and uh, I tell you what if you kick that goal they were uh, probably going to go and win the game there YCW but as it is Palm Beach still alive boys yeah you're right there Vossi I think uh, that would have been uh, the sealer just there but still plenty of opportunities for Palm Beach Gilbert doing the ruck work once again Hutchison over to Luca Goonan he tries to step one he's tackled And the umpire is going to circle and call for another stoppage. They're winning the ball around. Uh, sorry, they're winning the ball on the outside. YCW, which is a huge concern for the Sharks. So Luca Goonan, can he run onto it? Ball's inside forward 50. Butland, he's tackled. It's going to be cleared by Bomb Beach. Stenning. They go over to Bo Bailey. They've got Lee further afield. He's got the footy. He can go in, but it's a smother. He goes back. He's got Sinclair there. Great defensive work winner. by BJ Credlin. Spoiled out. We'll get a throw in. 8-5, 53, Bomb Beach, 6 3, 39. That's how you win a final knee. you got to wonder, why was that smother allowed in the 50-metre penalty given earlier? Interpretation does. Oh, my goodness. But that is an outstanding defensive effort and why they'll probably go through. Uh, sorry, they'll get next week off, which they'll earn with acts like that. So McLean's got the footy for Bomb Beach. 25 clearances apiece, which is a huge win for YCW. Yeah, have not stopped. Inside forward 50, Bomb Beach go. Vossi's distracted by yeah, Whale and his big <laughs> calves. He's inside <laughs> forward 50, they go. And we'll get another stoppage. He loves it, doesn't he? Absolutely. That's his, that's his little uh, card as well, so it's not a bad one. The ball up inside forward 50 for the Sharks. Can they get something going their way? They can. This is big. They're going to get a free kick going the way of Mitch Gent. They just need to get another goal on the board, just get some momentum going their way. Yeah, the leadership is what they need. And this is a big moment. Leadership will win your finals. If you can go back and slot this, boy, oh boy, we are going to have an absolute rip snorting finish on our hands around the ground for Bendigo Bank. Uh, no change to the three-quarter time score for Karingal and Somerville. Karingal still up by 42 points. The winner, likely Karingal, to play Lang Warren in the grand final next week. So Mitch Gent, he kicks it for Bomb Beach. <laughs> so they're just clawing their way back. Aren't they? So that's now... Making think... it interesting now, Daz. Absolutely. I think that's their 11th scoring shot, I think. Don't quote me on that yet. Uh, but that's their 21st inside 50, so their efficiency going forward is absolutely immense. 10th uh, scoring shot, I should say. So they're 10 from 21 at the moment. Good enough to be around the 50% mark. So it's only an eight-point ball game here. YCW 8-5, 53. Bomb Beach 7, 345. Can they get another one? They seem to get momentum in that... Uh, second quarter. Joe Fisher's moving to the rucks, being a good one for the Sharks. Ball comes out. Armitage oh. just barrels through Wallace.
comes out to Mullane. He sidesteps Jackson Casey. He's been fantastic once again. So's Luca Goonan, but that's a bit of a disappointing kick. It can't be deliberate. <laughs> no, You've got to give David Armitage credit for the appeal, but goodness me, it's just come off the side of his boot. So, Bossy, remind us what happens um, to the winner and loser of this game. Loser plays next Sunday in the preliminary final. It's an eight-day break for that preliminary final. And, of course, the winner has a 15-day break before buttering up in the grand final, Daz. So, ball was thrown back in. Gilbert, Goonan. Gilbert gets a handball out to Casey. Quick kick by Mitch Gent, the last goal kicker. Falls in the lap of Fisher. Gilbert just goes to don't argue. He wants to get back on his left. It was almost a clever little kick going the way of Lee. Well, we're going to get a throw it. Oh, free kick going the way of Bomb Beach. So the momentum just starting to go their way, boys. A couple Absolutely. of free kicks. If they can score again here, they've got Shane McDonald deep in the goal square alongside Trent Dennis Lane. And this quarter isn't going to end for another about 18 minutes. So oh, poor kick. Chopped off. Luca Goonan. Fantastic once again. So... Might have been a from half back. He goes down the line. Going up. Waterston couldn't take the mark. Ball on the ground. Chance for Casey. A hand pass. Verma goes inside attacking 50. Looking there but not finding an option. Ball picked up by Credlin. Goes out towards half back. He was looking there for a teammate who couldn't take the mark. Bond Beach should be able to pick the ball up and lay it up again. No, they fumble. And the umpire says, I'm going to ball it up. Between wing and left half 40 for Bond Beach. And all of a sudden, this game is very much on a knife's edge. Bomb Beach get the next goal. Whoever gets it, it's got the decided advantage. If Bomb Beach get it, it'll be two points and well and truly game on. Can the Stone Cats answer? They go towards the centre of the ground. Ball's still on the ground and a pack of players develop. The umpire says, I'm going to ball it up. Right smack bang in the centre of Eastbourne Road here, Olympic Oval in Rosebud. So, try by the umpire. Knocked down by Schmidt. Another tackle applied. The umpire says, I'm going to ball it up once again. 53 by CW. 45 Bond Beach. Eight points as a margin. And these two sides do not want to give an inch here, Daz. Four of the last five clearances have gone to Bond Beach. They've certainly got the momentum. thrown up. Schmidt, McLean doing the ruck work now. Right. He runs onto it for Bomb Beach. Gets a kick forward. Players just fall over. Byron Barry's leading the race. Bo Bailey tracks there with him. A free kick's going to go the way of Frankston YCW to Byron Barry. He goes in short. He's found Lockie Wallace. It's a good kick because they're still going to need one or two goals to win this game, the Stone Cats. So Jimmy Cahill's got the run going good through. Kick. They found him out in the wing. He goes in looking for a target, but standing in the Jeez, hole a poor was kick. right. That's a really poor kick. Then he goes sideways over to Douglas. He can go in and look for Calvin Lee. Not a great kick, but he's able to grab the footy. Verma. They've retreated backwards. Under pressure here, Bomb Beach. Umpire calls for it. Jeez, he does a lot of things right, Calvin Lee, doesn't he? I don't reckon he's had one kick to his advantage for the entire game, but he's still putting everything on the line and follows up magnificently. Credit to him. Oh, no. And that's, that's one of the worst field kicks I've ever seen. Cardo's putting that one out of bounds on the fall. How many goals do we reckon are left in this game, boys? Oh, I think there's probably three left in it, Daz. I'll say two. Well, for Bond Beach fans, they're going to want those two Vossi if they're going to get over the line. Free kick helps. It's not out of the realms of possibility that we uh, that we could have extra time, by the way. Absolutely. McLean, he goes in. Out the back. Bound standing. He can go over oh, the top. Oh, no. Didn't find Sinclair. It's inside forward 50. BJ Credlin comes through. He goes to the top looking for Henry Berenger. The ball goes out. We'll get a throw in. Sullivan. Shane McDonald was on his own in the goal square. Just had to take two or three steps backwards and be able to get the power in his leg. That's a huge missed opportunity. 
They had the man all the way back there. Might have been might have been TDL up towards the goal square, but they decided not to go. They took, went in short instead. So bound around Potter to throw the ball back into play. High kick out of defence. And take the mark. Was Sean Corrigan easily outpointed Tyre Deese there on that occasion? Oh, no. Kicking towards the centre of the ground. His hand passed off by Tacey. Now they go forward through right in towards centre half forward. All about 40 metres out from the goal that they're attacking here, Bomb Beach. And they'll come back in once again. Verma goes inside, but the mark will be taken in defence. He's there standing up well there. They're leaving their opponents, the Stone Cats, to get in the hole. The veteran, Byron. They call him Pizer. Now he turns it over. Now Bomb Beach go bang from attacking 50. And that is a goal. And that is game on, boys. Back to two points. Bo Bailey once again. Oh, absolutely. He's been one of their best, if not the best. Bo Bailey has been fantastic. And if there is only one goal left in this game, as Vossi predicts. <laughs> wow, what a finish. You're right, Vossi. Jack Sullivan, not Sinclair. So I, uh, Jackie Sinclair, the When you uh, see him in the red, red, white and black, <laughs> you just think Jack S Sinclair, don't you? Well, you probably think Calvin Lee's Jack Sinclair with the hair that Calvin <laughs> Lee's got. Absolutely. <laughs> So, so Keringle have all but booked their place, boys. They're still seven goals up on Somerville. Here, boys, all of a sudden. It's got colder, but the footy certainly oh, hasn't. 8553 Bomb Beach, 8351. Luca Goonan. Ball comes out. Mitch Gents stood up in this last quarter. Free kick's going to go the way of Bomb Beach oh, once oh, again. Oh, momentum oh, is going the way of Bomb Sorry. Beach. Verma. There's only about 12 full minutes gone left down in the this line, one, boys. They've found McLean. He was that off. should be 50. That's the same sort of thing, Daz. It's yeah. all about interpretation. It was. The umpire was slow to call play on. The ball's inside the forward 50 for Bomb Beach. It's probably the same thing. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So 32 to 24, the clearances for Bomb Beach, and it's starting to take its hold. They've also had eight of the last 10 inside 50s. So they're working their way towards their goal, Bomb Beach, but the umpire's going to call for it. 8.553, Bomb Beach 8.351 if you've just joined us. 15 minutes gone in the last quarter. And it's you would think a there is a wind, AJ. There's really not. Yeah, a little bit. If well, you... that breeze hitting my face must be yeah. imaginary then, Vossi. Oh, Suss is, Suss is loving it. I think you'll find... I, I shut this earlier, Vossi, the side, and it was certainly coming through. So Bomb Beach going with a slight advantage. Ball's in there, forward 50 once again. YCW under pressure. They get a hack oh. quick. Mitch Gent going to stand under it. McLean. No one can take the mark. It runs under pressure once they get the footy. Lilac, he gets a quick kick forward. Douglas is there for Bomb Beach. How's this going to bounce? It's going to go out. We'll get a throw in once again right in front of our broadcasting spot here at Olympic Park. This is finals footy. This is the epitome of finals footy. No one's using the ball with a lot of precision. Whoever can stand up, the leaders of their football club are going to book themselves a spot here. I think they've certainly found that Sam Gilbert is much better as a midfielder today. They've got McLean in the ruck here at the moment. Not saying he's had a bad game. It's just his natural leaping's not really going to uh, be into effect against Bailey Schmidt. Nearly 17 minutes in the last quarter. It's a two-point margin in the second semi-final. Winner through to the grand final. Loser goes by the prelim. It's all to play for. Bomb Beach are asking. They're asking a lot of questions here at the moment. YCW at this stage have the answers, but you get the feeling if they keep knocking on the door, you get the feeling that the door's going to break open here. You've just copped the stink eye, Vossi, as soon as you said YCW. From the bloke out the front. Oh, boy. <laughs> well... Anyone would anyone know if you believe the story on the number one ticket hold for, for YCW, <laughs> if you believe people are around the place. A lot of respect for YCW as a side, and uh, they've, they've done it well for a long time, and they're looking to get back in the premiership race, but to do it, they're going to get to a grand final. Still a long way away from that at this stage, even though they're in front. There are still so many twists to come here. They've gone backwards, finding BJ Craigland. Going That's out the big the far side in the last now. quarter. Five and a half minutes to go. They're going long down the quarter. wing. Corrigan, he goes on his left up the half forward. Who can stand up? And Great it was answer. the player there in Bailey Angwin who takes the mark. 
There's plenty of time for them here. They just need to be smart, Bomb. They should just... Uh, yep. They just peppered that one in. They didn't really think about it. Just put it high and hope that it was going to land in someone's arms wearing the uh, the black and black and red and white out there. They don't look like scoring the Stone Cats. That's a huge problem. That's out in the full. Luke Painter, he brought it out. It certainly has gone out of bounds. So, Bomb Beach, you're going to have another attacking foray here. Isn't it great to see Luke Painter out, out there playing like that? It's horrific injury he suffers. A dislocated hip or something he yep. suffered a few years ago. Pretty sure, yeah. Dislocated hip. So, Frankston, they're going to repel once again. Coming out to the boundary line. And we'll get a throw in. Two points. Bears 53 to, deliberate. to 51. It's not deliberate. It's insuff insufficient intent. But I get the feeling no one wants a dictionary lesson at the moment. So, ball to be thrown back into play. On true centre wing, broadcast side. Got about four and a half minutes to go in this uh, in this second semi-final. A goal oh, for YCW oh, might be enough, throw. but they threw the ball. So, Bomb Beach have got the opportunity again to load up. Can they get them into the hands of a Casey or a Armitage or the man who's got it at the moment, Sam Gilbert, he's, he's way too far out. He's on true centre wing. Now plus 11 in clearances, Bond Beach. A high kick goes Gilbert towards half forward. Ball knocked away and goes over for a boundary throw in. Got to give credit to YCW here. They've come so hard, Bond Beach, and they're just they're holding it together for now. Like we said, they don't really look like scoring, but yeah, they can't get it past uh, halfway, does at the moment. Yeah, so absolutely. They've prided themselves on defence. That's been the hallmark of their sides. Who says the, you need to have 200 points in a game of footy to get a cracker? This has been a belter. Over the, over the dynasty, the, the time that they've had. And, of course, they haven't won for a few years, so you guess that dynasty's over. This could be potentially the start of another one for them if they win, if they win this year. But just they'll be looking to get back on the winner's list. But defence has been the hallmark of what they do. High kick by Bo Bailey towards attacking 50. In fact, just inside attacking 50. Ball on the ground. Chance here for Barry. A quick kick out of defence. It'll more than likely come back in. Hewlett got the ball down. Got it towards right. A hand pass over the top. Went towards Murray. Now it's knocked back. LaFontaine almost uh, made good for that for, for YCW. It comes out. Patullo, a high kick. Goes to centre half forward and oh, well done. Great mark. Had to take the then. mark there. Did take the mark and the mark's been taken for Bomb Beach in defence. Oh, looking to plant. Almost got into trouble, but getting the ball. And now long kick down towards a two on two contest on centre wing. Is that a mark? Yeah. Gilbert might have used his head, but it doesn't matter. He's taking the mark. Goes towards the forward oh. pocket. Is that a mark? Is that a free kick? It's neither. Stayed in. Ball, still an opportunity about 15 out from the goal that they're attacking. Has to be ball. And the umpire has said... Oh, oh, wow. Three minutes to go, boys. That's Deep right. inside Bomb Beach's forward 50 here. Of course Bomb Beach are absolutely pressing. Yeah, and of course they can't just rush it through on the full or it'll be a free kick. Joe Fisher out of the air. It's a goal. <laughs> so Bomb Beach hit the front. How do you let that happen? Oh. How do you let that happen? Because... You know what what the Ruckman potentially is trying to do in that situation. How do you let that happen? Bomb Beach are in front, boys. There's yeah. two and a half minutes to go and they're up by four points. When you get the momentum in a last quarter, oh, just it is so hard to get out of it as an opposition. Yep. And the way that they've got the ball going inside forward 50, you know, their repetition of getting it in and in and in, whilst they'll be only getting it to halfway. Yep. And you can just see it, it, it taxes you. So it around. almost taxes your double because you know that you've got to fight and you've only got a small margin to defend. Yeah, the damn wall is going to break at some point, isn't it? So a quarter time, Bond Beach were 12-6 up in clearances. YCW at one stage were up 16-15. to That is now at, can you believe it, 37-25 to in clearances now. Oh, LaFontaine's got a chance here. Goes to 50. Why are you the handball over the top. A chance here for the Stone Cats if they can just get the ball out. A quick kick around the corner towards the forward pocket. It bounces, it bounces, it goes over. Throw in. For a boundary throw in. And the man who kicked that in was Lachlan Wallace. And Bomb Beach haven't won a premiership, a senior premiership since the 80s. AJ might be right. Three they've, goals left. We've already had two. They've got the they've got the chance here, Bomb Beach. They've got to stay firm and they'll be into a grand final. Defend well for two minutes. 
And that spot in the 2022 grand final is theirs. But they'll be happier if they can get the ball out of trouble because like Bomb Beach getting in front about two minutes ago, it's too close to YCW's goal at the moment. All it needs is it, like what Bomb Beach did, take it out of the ruck, AJ. Absolutely. I'll tell you Bomb what. Bomb Beach can't get sloppy here. Three minutes left. They can't let anyone out the fort, the front of the contest, like they have. Mitch Gent clearing kick. Oh, oh and it's oh, just, just landed in the lap of Verma. Just hold it. Let the umpire tell you to play on. Count the clock down. One more. They could have gone back almost... to Waterstone. Yeah, they could have. They can't turn it over here, Bomb Beach. They just need to keep it going forward. Holding the man. They're going the way of Frankston YCW. Oh. Well, is there one more twist? Beringer. 90 seconds. He goes in short. He's found his target. Got to go here. Got to go. No, you don't. Still got to be smart with the footy, Vossi. Inside forward 50, they go. Catch that. Oh, you had it? No, Daz, settle down. Oh, come on, mate. You got to pay that. Settle yeah, down. You pay that in round seven. You got to pay it now. We've got about 90 seconds to go. This is an absolute thriller here at Olympic Park. Can Bomb Beach hold on? Ball smothered out to Sampus. Handball over the top. Shot at goal. Fading. And it's gone through for a behind. Ooh. Three points. Be about a minute to go, I reckon, now, boys. Get a man. That's what you've got to do. It's what you pride yourselves on with your defence, YCW. You've got to get a man. Long kick down the line. If they take a mark on Beach, that should end the game. 8-6-54. Let the umpire tell Stone you when to taps. play. Sharks, 9-3-57. A oh. kick out towards halfback. It's going to come back in oh, potentially for Byron oh, Barry. He drops it like a sack of smoke. Oh. They're going to get a free kick here, the Stone Tap. Oh, he's out. And go towards half foot. Is an opportunity for Painter. He's he goes it. long. He's kicked the goal. He's kicked it. And the Stone Tats are in front in the second semi final. Oh, wow, we. <laughs> 9 6 60 the Stone Tats. At 9 357 Bomb Beach. And Byron Barry dropped that like the proverbial hot potato, but it ended up coming out and getting a free kick, and the kick went to Luke Pater. It was a long kick off the boot, and it curved back nicely, and that is a goal. Three points. Boys, <laughs> you in front. That's the score, there. How was that? Barry. Oh, boy. Here we go. So they need to get it going forward, Bomb Beach. YCW just jump on top. Another stoppage here. Not so it's all or nothing now for Bomb Beach. Just get everyone forward of the footy. Absolutely. Cahill. Jeez, that's dangerous. Oh. Goes through Douglas. Murray. They're going to win here, Frank, some YCW. They're going to prevail. Over to Diaz. They just has to kick it as long as he can. Create a contest. Troutbeck. Oh. Luca Goonan. There it is. Wow. So YCW have snatched it out of nowhere. Goonan shot a goal out of bounds on the full. Not that it really matters. I guess we're going to have another talking point, boys, about uh, the disposal there against Byron Barry. Yeah, umpire was blindsided, but, yeah, huge decision to not pay that one, but to pay the too high. Wow, what a finish. I'll tell you what, Bond Beach have lost no fans, no respect after that performance. I wish they could play next week, boys. Oh, my goodness, I wish we could get a replay of that in two weeks' time. If that's what you, if that's what you get today... You hope that Bomb Beach get through. Yep. Absolutely. They're just for a contest that good.